the equipment for a bulky Jones dressing. In this case, I'm going to assume that there's a surgical incision or maybe even blistering. So we're going to do four by four. Under the four by four, you can put whatever dressing you would want, like, like a zero form, and then uh, a web roll to hold that dressing in place. This is our bulky Jones uh, dressing which uh, is then followed by a four inch curlex. The curlex is, curlex is what allows us to actually compress, which is uh, a very important part of um, a bulky Jones dressing. Above the four inch curlex, we can then put on our plaster. This roll already has, in this setting, a wrap on top of it. If you use plaster alone, you do want to put web roll on both sides of the plaster because the plaster itself is very sticky to the curlix dressing. It becomes very difficult to take off the dressing if you apply plaster directly to the curlix. And then the last layer is a, is a six inch double ace wrap. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. We have our patient who is in the prone position in this case. In the office setting, oftentimes the patient in the prone setting is helpful because it's easier to put the ankle into a neutral position when the knee is bent. So the gastrocnemius is, really, is, uh, is put at rest with the knee bent and therefore the prone position is easier than the supine position to have optimal positioning of the foot. So I like to almost always have the, the ankle in neutral position at the time of placing the dressings the exception being uh, Achilles surgery where the ankle is, uh, is splinted in a resting position which is in some plantar flexion. The majority of cases including ankle fractures we're trying to uh, brace, uh, in, I'm sorry, to splint in a neutral position. So here she's neutral, we're going to put, we're going to just simulate an incision. If she had a, an incision on the front part of her ankle, we're going to have a dressing here. Hold that please. Followed by a web roll. The web roll is a single layer and the reason is that if after surgery especially if the ankle bleeds, if the, if the wounds are, are bleeding, then cut here for me, then um, the dressing can act as a tourniquet. So it's a single layer such that it doesn't act like a tourniquet, but it's simply holding the dressing on, uh, the 4x4 four four on, uh, on top of the incisions themselves. Now we're ready for a Bulky Jones. Bulky Jones can be split in half just manually. So we're going to wrap this. We like to over wrap slightly, meaning onto the toes is fine uh, because the, we want to make sure that there's plenty of cushion around the foot so that when the curlex is applied in compression there isn't any pressure directly onto the skin uh, with the curlex which would cause wound issues. So here I've wrapped up the leg, identify the tub tibial tubercle I want to be just distal to that with my dressings. We're going to add a little bit more uh, padding. Under the back of the heel because they typically rest in this area so I like to bolster that. And then the areas of a little more pressure which is in the, in the forefoot here I'm going to add. And we've got plenty around here. Next is going to be a four inch cling to achieve compression. Sorry, the, the curlex is fine. Four inch curlex. Four inch curlex. So here we're going to do our compressive wrap. So this should be snug. It should feel like it's Pulling, pulling and denting the the, the uh, bulky Jones dressing some.
This is achieving the majority of the compression. And I'm leaving a sleeve of the bulky Jones dressing around it so that we don't uh, damage the skin. That was good, Beth. So next is the, the wrap here. So we can measure this out directly on the skin as an example here. So I'm going to just use this to measure out the distance that we have. We're going to do a posterior, posterior. so we'll cut that there. It'll be our first one. And then we're going to do a U. I like crossing the U very slightly in the front. And I say slightly because uh, when there's an when there's an eight when there's just the plaster, the plaster really sticks well to itself. So if you do a lot of overlap, you need a cast saw to get it off. So I do little to no overlap here, so that we don't need a cast saw to remove this uh, later on. So this is the length of our our U. We're gonna put on the posterior mold here. Here, because the plaster has a covering on it. I don't need to cover up the Curlex. If I don't have this cover over the plaster, then I wrap the whole foot and ankle and leg with a web roll so that it won't stick to it too much. So here we've got one. Next we're going to do the U. Now we're ready for uh, getting these wet and applying them. never want to do really hot water in case it ha ends up touching the skin and won't burn their skin especially in the operative setting if they've had a block they may not feel it you want to make sure that the What's temperature of the water yep, wouldn't burn their skin in case it was for some reason they came That's in contact with it first. so post your mold first followed by the U I'll take a, the um, double A six inch wrap is next. So I overlap again here. We can do a little bit of compression through this as well. The advantages of the bulky Jones dressing is that the main advantage is that you're getting compression without putting the ankle and foot at significant risk of a compartment syndrome or creating neurovascular compromise by virtue of the castor splint becoming too tight onto the limb. So here we're just going to show her toes. That way the patient can check to make sure that there's adequate flow. The, the splint's been put on in a neutral position and we can adjust that in terms of positioning. Curl in the edges on both sides. and near the toes. After a few minutes, the plaster will become firm and hold the ankle well in place.